There's a tool that you can use in order to speed up the process inside the structure from motion software uh, that's specific related to the dense point cloud uh, building or calculation. That's the bounding box or the region of processing. That's a kind of volume that you can define or you can enlarge or you can reduce in order to focus the attention, your attention and the attention of the structure from motion software on the points, on the points of the sparse point cloud that you'd like to treat, you'd like to take in account in order to generate the dense point cloud. If you have uh, a huge, a big area, a big surface and you actually want to have a dense point cloud of just a portion of that surface, you can, instead of removing points from the sparse point cloud, you can reduce the surface, the area, the volume of calculation using the bounding box. Bounding box is also called region of calculation. Um, it depends on the structure from motion software that you are working on. In this video, I'd like to show you how to treat the bounding box inside 3D Flow Zephyr. And so this, this is a sparse point cloud that I generated with uh, Zephyr. It's um, a water stream. I'm not sure that you can appreciate that, uh, but it's a water stream. These are the pictures, the position of the cameras, and this is the, the surface. Imagine that you'd like to um, reduce the area that you'd like, the surface, the volume that you'd like to use for the dense point cloud calculation just at the very central part of this uh, of this stream so you'd like to get rid of these side areas and also this and this part of the of this 3d model um, you can do it using the bounding box and if you do that everything that is inside the bounding box will be taken in account from the software from Zephyr. everything that is outside the bounding box will be discarded so will not be considered in the dense point cloud calculation and in the next processing so the mesh and the mesh plus the texture and that's a big deal because dense point cloud required generally speaking requires um, a lot of time for processing it and so if you better define the surface you reduce the surface to the points that you really need you can really speed up the process so how can you access to the bounding box tool inside Zephyr? You can do that by two ways. There is one way that is scene, bounding box, edit bounding box, or right click in the main window, in the main area of Zephyr, bounding box, edit bounding box. That's basically the same. Um, when you, um, when you uh, activate this, um, this tool, you can see uh, this volume uh, that you can move, you can rotate, you can enlarge, you can translate. Uh, this is the volume that will be considered by Zephyr for the calculation of the dense point cloud. Everything that it's inside it, so that it's uh, inside this uh, volume that is uh, mm, highlighted with a kind of light blue color, will be calculated. But you can you can rotate it, you can move along the three axes, X, Y, and Z, you can enlarge or reduce. So if you'd like to rotate the bounding box, you just have to choose which is the, um, the axis uh, as a reference for rotation, that's the Y axis. So if you click on one of these circle, you have to highlight it and click and move the, the mouse it's just rotating along the y-axis you can do that, that you can do the same for the x-axis so choose the right the red circle and move along it or you can use the z-axis and that's basically the same choose the blue circle and click and drag if you click just near it it doesn't work you need to highlight and then rotate but you may like to you may want to uh, move without rotation so you can choose one of the three axes x sorry x red y green and blue uh, z and just click on this x this segment define the axis 
um, click and move, click and drag, and uh, this this volume will uh, will move all the way to this direction or the other one on that x axis. You can do that the same. You can do the same on the y axis. You can do the same on the x axis. Um, finally, there's the the third movement. The, the third modification that you can do is uh, enlarge or reduce it. So for enlarging or reducing, that is called scale inside Zephyr. You have to click. That you have to ha highlight one of this uh, uh, face. Uh, a rectangular uh, shape you have to bring the mouse bring the arrows uh, over it um, let this uh, let this uh, face highlight and then you can click and drag and move just to move the this side of the, the this solid in order to make it bigger or make it slower slow and uh, make it I'm sorry um, smaller if you are quite familiar with the extrude tool in software like Sketch, SketchUp, it's basically the same thing. So you have to, you can move, uh, you, you have to align the face uh, and click and drag for modifying the, modifying this, this volume. All right, if something, uh, if you'd like to go back to the original uh, um, original volume that you had, you can always, you can always go back and, sorry about that, just click here, reset, and the software will bring you back to the original va volume that it showed you when you just uh, launched this tool for the very first time. But you can also, um, instead of having all these uh, three movement available and maybe it could be a little bit messy um, especially for uh, um, for particular 3d models or tricky surfaces you can fix uh, one two or three of these movements in order to focus your attention to just one of them uh, at uh, step by step so you have to click here in this case each of these movement are available are admitted translate rotate scale if you click here on translate look at this axis they will disappear okay that means that you can you can no longer rotate you can no longer translate you can no longer move this volume on the x y and z axis you just you, you can now you can just rotate or make it bigger or, or, or smaller you can scale it if you rot if you like to fix the rotation just click here and the rotation circles disappear so now you can just basically move along this, these faces in order to scale it if you click over it you can you basically you just see the bounding box but you can you cannot edit it in any way that's nice because um, if you just have to, if you'd like just to focus on the translation, you just click on it and move it uh, as you want without bothering about the rotation. And that's the same for the rotation. And that's the same for, you can just rotate it without, um, without messing it with movement along the, the axis. And that's the same with the scale factor so you can just scale without having any other distractions on the 3d in the 3d in the 3d area let's go back to reset there's another tool here that's the smart reset which basically uh, that's the same if i click reset um, the software bring me back to the smart reset smart reset is a kind of um, um, solution let's say solution that the software gives you in order to best define the volume of calculation uh, considering the sparse point cloud that's inside it um, it's kind of conservative solution is not gonna get rid of any point of the sparse point cloud but it not, it's not too big either um, let's try and see how we can um, effectively uh, edit the bounding box in order to fixing a portion of the central part of this stream uh, in order to have a very 
a mu much more quicker calculation of the dance point cloud. So I think that um, one of the best thing to do in this case is moving and um, to the moving to the um, to the top view and so you can go here scene camera view from top in this case i can see the model just from the top from above so i can see the x and y plane and there's no um the the, the z axis is just coming towards me uh, out from the screen it's not an orthographic projection as you can see there's a perspective here you can see this side of this uh, parallel people shape that i can clearly see that's due to perspective i can move to the orthographic projection just by clicking here and you can see that this part this um the the the, the part that you just sewn um uh, before they disappear just because uh, the the software just projected everything on the two dimension well actually it's not it's still it, it is still a 3d model but this view is projected in the two-dimensional xy plane so uh, before before resizing the bounding box before making it smaller i think that it's much better uh, to rotate it in order to have one of this side parallel to the central portion of this stream so let's um let's make the rotation active so i'm, I'm gonna click here and i'm gonna rotate it uh, around along uh, the z axis so i'm gonna hitting clicking the the blue circle and highlight it and moving around in order to have this side uh, parallel to the central portion of this bounding box now uh, now that i did it i need to resize it i need to making it smaller in order to uh, highlight or include just this part just this point of the sparse point cloud so i'm gonna exit from the orthographic projection because now i need to move it in the 3d i can i can still move it in the 3d but it's still an orthographic projection and it could be a little bit tricky for the orbit so let's go to scene camera remove orthographic projection and i think that it's much better now so now i am gonna fix the rotation because i don't want it to be rotated anymore and just using the scale the scale tool so i'm gonna highlight this face i'm gonna move in all the way to the left uh, this point that will be outside the 3d this shape will not be taken in account in the calculation in the dance point cloud I'm gonna move in all the way this way and then I'm gonna move in this way and then maybe maybe a little bit more here and then I'd like to to uh, move this side all the way down here um, as you can see I cannot I cannot pull it I need to push it so uh, I need to rotate the model here and select this face and push it all the way to the point that I'd like to I think that it's it's best um, and that's it if I need to I move it too much to the on the X Z, Z direction I can even uh, reduce a little bit the Z uh, the information so the elevation of this this shape and that's it let me go back to the let me go back to the top view view from top okay and uh, maybe I I can even uh, translate a little bit so I'm gonna deactivate the scale button and activate the translate and just moving all the way here all over moving along the X axis that's it basically that that's it I can I I think that's fine in this case all these points that are outside this volume will not be taken in account they'll be taken in account just the points that are inside and i can assure that it, that's a big deal because all these points will not be taken in account and the, the software will speed up the dense point cloud processing if you click uh if you close you can export this bounding box as an xml file or if you have a bounding box in an xml file you can import it um if i 
If I quit this tool, the bounding box disappears, but it's still on. Uh, the software will still take it in account for the processing. You can also um, choose to have the bounding box always visible. So go back to the bounding box, edit bounding box, and just flag this tool. As you can see, the bounding box is still the, the one that we edited a couple of minutes ago. Click here, always show the bounding box. And if you quit this tool, the bounding box is still there. And you can, you, you can no longer edit, you have to access the edit tool, but you can see, you can clearly see it in order to uh, appreciate what's inside and what's outside the bounding box. So basically, uh, this video is, is over. Uh, I thought I, uh, I thought I would have talked for much less time. So it's, uh, it's almost 15 minutes and I'm talking about the bounding box, but I think that bounding box is really important because it really can speed up the process, um, getting rid of all the points that you don't want. Uh, considering the fact that um, when you align pictures for the very first time, you do not have the chance for choosing a bounding box. The bounding box will be edited um, just after the sparse point cloud has been uh, calculated and that's visible in the 3D area. So starting from the sparse point cloud for of the match, matching points, you can define a bounding box. If you define a bounding box, the dense point cloud will be um, will be calculated based on the point inside the bounding box. And that will be for the mesh tool because the mesh will refer to the dense point cloud. So pay attention to the bounding box, but you can always uh, make some new processing with another bounding box, uh, a bigger one, a smaller one. It depends on what you'd like to define, what you'd like to 3D reconstruct for from the pictures that you've just editing and uh, compose your data set. I hope that this video was useful. Feel free to share it. Feel free to connect with me at www.metricaltalks.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. Ciao.